Former Republican House Majority Leader Tom DeLay is with me now. Thank you, sir. I'm glad you're here. Thank you, Deidre. What do you make of, uh, first and foremost, what is going on in D.C., the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, this annual meeting, and the candidates are trying to show essentially that they respect Israel's position in the world? Well, I would love to hear what Trump's position is. Uh, I don't know what his position is on anything. Uh, he's about an inch uh, deep in, in specifics or, or where he is on anything. If he goes to APAC and talks about neutrality and the fact that uh, his top priority is to negotiate a peace treaty, uh, look, you don't make peace, you don't make deals with terrorists, and all you, you stand with Israel, and when these terrorists uh, step aside or, or die or go away, then you can start negotiating with some moderates. But so Congressman this whole notion... Donald Trump's list of, of foreign policy advisors, that doesn't reassure you at all. Uh, are you kidding? There's over 100 gen, uh, top generals and officers that have signed a letter about a month ago that swore that they would never vote for Donald Trump because they know that this man doesn't know what he's talking about. I mean, look what it was about Cuba when you asked uh, Sam Clovis about, about Cuba. His whole... Uh, position on Cuba is because Raul Castro didn't meet the president on the plane. What about the fact that they're oppressive dictators, that they have oppressed their people for 80 years, that they have people in prison and kill pre uh, people just on a whim? This whole notion that uh, once the Castros are gone, uh, good people are going to move in. Castro's uh, son and son-in-law are already taking over and running most of the government, and they're going to step right in. This, that's what Trump ought to be talking about, not the fact that Raul didn't go meet the president of the, on the tarmac. It just shows how shallow he is and how he doesn't know what he's talking Congressman, about. Congressman, how do you see Cuba, and it's something I brought up with Sam Clovis, but this idea that China has been doing pretty sizable deals with different countries in the Caribbean and just kind of getting closer and closer to where we are. As I mentioned, 300 million in Jamaica, 200 million on a few other islands, part of this so-called cabbage strategy. Should we be worried Deirdre, about that? We should be worried about it. I, I was raised in Venezuela. I even had a 13, when I was 13 years old, I had a, uh, an incident in Havana, Cuba with the uh, Castro goons. Uh, so I understand what's going on in Central and South America. The problem is we have an administration for seven years that has turned the other way and has allowed all of this to happen. And now they're opening up, <laughs> they're opening up with, with a commun the most communist country in our hemisphere. Um, we have a Marxist president that's negotiating with a communist dictator that kills people. Uh, we have got to get somebody that knows what they're talking about to be president of the United States so that they can set a policy for this hemisphere, particularly in the Caribbean and particularly in Central America, or we're going to be in a world of hurt. Congressman, I'm so glad, and thank you for sharing that first-person experience. That must have been harrowing.